uh, we need to do this quite a lot. It's so important. Uh, I'd like us to read. I'll read from here. I'm uh, sure by now we should have that in memory mass. I've quoted it that much. But let's look at it together again. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Um, that scripture bothers me a lot, and it bothers me because um, of a few reasons I will share with you. Now it says not all who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Who will enter? He who does what? The will of my father. Of my father. Now I think that's sufficient premise to say more important than anything in this world should be, am I doing the will of the Father? I will say that. If I want to make it to the kingdom of heaven, what was my what was my strongest desire? To do the will of the Father. Now, Jesus Christ says, not all who call me Lord. What does it mean to call Jesus Lord? To call Jesus Lord means I exist in a frame of mind where his lordship is not in contention. I am not debating his lordship. I do not exist among the company of people who think there is no God. I believe there is God. I do not believe there are other ways to God. I know that the Lord of my life and my ultimate <coughs> supreme authority is Jesus. I will together. But, but in this particular scenario, it became clear that they called him Lord, they recognized him as such, but they still fell out with him because they did not fit into the category of people who does the will of his father in heaven. And what becomes really, really bothersome about this particular story is the fact that he was surprised. I go together. Yeah. Um, and I hate this element of surprise. I don't like it. I like to know. If I go for a test, I like to come out with the test knowing that I failed. I go together. I like to come out knowing, ah, man, it was bloody. I hate to come out excited only for the script to be mad. <laughs> and they tell me I scored them. What will you do if they told you I scored them? There are two things you can do. There are some people to do before. One, I that you go back and examine yourself and forget about it. Or you contest it and say, no, how? How on this campus? And I call this kind of grief. There are many people who are not confident of their work enough to contest it. I have had the opportunity of contesting my scores in school before. Um, the first time I contested my scores, I was given a B. My first B on campus. I said B. Let's go B. I went to contest it. The process of contesting was very long. Because it was another demand that was not my demand. After I contested, I contested, somebody called me and said, What's your problem? What is score? I said, It's seven. I said, Okay, I'll do I said, Because if we check it, I use God to serve the problem. You know, they were challenging my faith about that done. So I let it go. <laughs> and I felt, let me not waste my time. Can I have used to study other courses and pursue this one? Let me arrive. The second time I had the opportunity of contesting my results, I scored 30F. Now, I was expecting it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the difference was too much for me not to contend it. Now listen, that I'm trying to show you the paradigm that makes for contention. Is when the results you are getting does not match at all with what you thought was your reality. For this particular cause, what made it even more painful was the fact that many of the people who have seen their results as got aid, I taught them. <laughs> you know when I saw the 30 years, I said it on the age of Joseph, when it became right next time. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, the age of Jesus when he came into power, and the age of David when he became king. At him. <laughs> so I contended. And I, I was very angry. So I called my friends as well to go ahead and contend it. I was close to the lecture. I can't tell it. It's not possible. And I contended it and checked it and checked it and eventually it's going as well again. Mm. I cannot see my full screen. Now follow me, Mr. These people, he says, they will say to me on that day, Lord, you don't understand. Eh? We did not just do the exam. We prophesied in your name. That's at least B. <laughs> Not only do we prophesy in your name, we also cast out demons. Wow. Demons recognize us. Ah, that's what he had that day. <laughs> now, I tell you, there's A and there's R. <laughs> <laughs> ah is when you see the result and you yourself as right. Ah, that's right. That's not an A, that's an R. He said, we have done wonders, mm. meaning we cannot even describe some things within your name. Mm. We can only summarize them as wonders. Mm. And when the world looks at it, that's nah. And then you solve a problem. And you now show the lecturer how the best people form the formula, form the formula. Mm. That's wonders. <laughs> and you do the exam. That's what you want to intimidate the lecturer. You do the exam. The person will be looking at you and he will call you after. Who is this person? I want to see you. So you did this. Well, wow. I said, you can see that they can use you for something else. Yeah. It says, we did wonders in your name. F should not be our score. This is not just even a B, it's an A, it's an R. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. In fact, I don't tell them, you didn't, you didn't even see my exam. Think of Depart from me. You will practice lawlessness. Now, the precursor to their lawlessness was the fact that what they were doing was not the will of the Father. I will assume that the will of the Father will cover prophesying in his name. I will assume that the will of the Father will cover casting out demons in his name. I will have believed that anybody who was doing wonders in his name already qualified in his will. Well, this is going to be one of the things that needs to be the most important thing that we engage our mind on. For doing the will of the Father. My prayer to this as we examine God's word, God's will will come alive in our hearts and we will find ourselves doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to ask you know, I want to ask a few questions. Um, let's go to Mark 3. Mark 3, 35. Let's follow the others. As we search forward in God's word to identify His will and position ourselves to be doing it. Mark 3 35. Now, the Bible says here, whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister, and my mother. This was Jesus Christ making a statement, defying even His own earthly family. The disciples came to meet Him and said, Ah, your mother and your father are outside. They want, to find, they want to see you. And it says, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father and my father, uh, uh, who, who does the will of God, is my brother and my sister and my mother. Now, what exactly is he saying here? He's saying, You don't even have access into being a member of my family. Okay, I love you now. That means I'm not a brother to Jesus, I'm not a joint here with him. I'm not the son of God. I can believe in his lordship. I may cast out demons. I may prophesy. And the summary of my existence may be wonders. But what enlists me in the family of God is that I am doing the will of God. And I say with this kind of statements about God's will, then I need to know what God's will. I need to be doing it. Are we together? Yes. Let's go to first John chapter 2. I see you looking for this will. The will of God. First John chapter 2, verse 15. I read. He says, 
Let me finish here as well. He says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world is passing away, and the loss of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. That means again that even eternity and eternal life is only connected through the will of God. Are we together? That when we find God's will, we will enter into the family of God. When we find God's will, we are destined to live forever. When we find God's will, we are destined to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That God's will becomes the primary thing that we live for, is the primary thing that we want to be Are you following me on this? Now, how do I access God's will? How do I become somebody who is involved in doing God's will? We have seen how important it is. Jesus Christ is saying, calling me Lord, Lord, is not important. Doing the will of my Father in heaven is. Jesus Christ is saying, there are people who are doing wonders in my name who are practicing lawlessness. You know what lawlessness is? Lawlessness is operating as a literally without law, without order. Lawlessness is operating in such a way that I am I am not connected to the king of my kingdom in executing my desire. Lawlessness is operating without law. Now, how do I access this will? And that's how I want to talk about the first thing I wish I explain is God's will needs to be something that we pray to begin to operate in. To say, God, I want to be taught your way. I want to know your will. And let's go very quickly to Psalm 103 to see people who are afraid to do God's will. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 10. I read. He says, deliver, he says, teach me to do your will. You are my God. The spirit is good. Lead me in the land of Christ. This was David. David, I realized, is a prophet. He is he's far ahead of his generation. This is why God loves David. Is because David, Bible says this is a man of my heart. David is operating in the terrain where God is looking and saying, Wow, you know, I like this person is far ahead. He says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. If you go to Luke 11, so Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray. How did he have to pray? He said, when you pray, what should you, you say? Our Father, who has heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That the center peace of even the prayer that just not disciples is for them to engage God for His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And let's go to Colossians 4 1. Colossians 4 1 together. I'm going to be the right Bible reading today because if you want to find God's will, you will not find it in another place. You will find God's will in God's word. Paul was talking about Epaphras. Say, Epaphras, who is one of you, a born son of Christ, greets you. Always laboring firmly for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. I like us to pray today. Let's pray before we progress. I say, God, I pray today that I want to stand perfect and complete in all your will. Open my eyes to understand your will. Let me understand your will. And let me plug myself into the things you are doing with the earth. Let us pray. Talk to God. Say, God, I don't want to wander around the earth. I don't want to be somebody who, who fails the exams of life and is confident and succeeded. I want to do your will. I want to find your will and do it. I don't want to know your will and not do it. I want to operate in your will. I want to be found doing your will. Teach me. Open my eyes. Open my understanding. Let me grasp that which you intend and desire to do in the midst of the earth. Let your will be clear to me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Now, I'll tell you one of the biggest problems we've had in society. This is very important. I like you to understand this. Once you understand this, you can build a lot of things on this. One of the problems we've had in society is that we are not looking for God's will. We are looking for God's will for ourselves. We are looking for our own will. And we are looking for a marriage point between God's will and ours. I'd like you to understand this. That more often than all we pray, we ask, what is God's will for my marriage? What is God's will for my education? What is God's will for my this? What's God's will for my that? Children of God, what we need to ask is what is God's will. If you look at all the experience and all the expressions of God's will, you won't see it linked to any particular human being. It says, I pray, this is when you pray, pray that my will be done. When you pray, ask for my will to be done. He says, this is, this is how you make it to my kingdom of heaven when you do God's will. When you do the will of my Father in heaven. Now, unfortunately, we live in a society where rather than seek to plug God's life and will into ours, we need to seek God's will and understand that ours will be found in fulfillment of His own will. Now, understand this. We are busy looking for God's will for our life, God's will for my life. What we are supposed to be looking for is what's God's will. And how do I plug my life with it? Now, before each of us was made, God had an agenda. Are we together? God had an agenda before we were born. He had an agenda before we were made. He made us suited for that agenda. That, listen, the moment we disconnect ourselves from the fact that God had an agenda before all of us came as pieces in that puzzle, the moment we see our lives disconnected from God's agenda, we will begin to seek for God's will for our lives. Instead of seeking for God's will and finding where we plug into it. I said, is it difficult to realize that God's agenda dates from timeless, timeless eternity? And his will was crafted before we were fashioned. Does it occur to you that we are made specifically to be able to execute God's intentions? And our best can only be found when we are plugged into him. When did we replace our with mine? When did I replace his with mine? When did I lose the love of community in exchange for selfishness and personal agenda? Listen, God is looking for people in this of the earth who are willing to connect with him in what he is doing. Now, that we live in a world where what is popular is how do I access what's my purpose? What gifts has he given me? For my purpose is bigger than that. Understand that God has an agenda and that your fulfillment and your highest value is in plugging into that agenda. I'll say that again. Say with me, God has an agenda. God has an agenda. Or say with God has an agenda. God has an agenda. God has a will. God has a will. My best in life, my best in life is finding how I function in that will. And that's what God's doing God's will is about. Now, we want to look at what God calls God's will and how we do it. Let's go right to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. What is God's will and how we really do it? It's very simple. God's will is not complicated. I don't know why people you know, don't say that people only ask for things that are lost. When I say, Where is my bed? Because I can't find it. If I can find my Bible, I won't say where's my Bible. Something about something about wrong with me. So say where's my Bible? I'm looking at it. But it's when I know that I've lost it. I don't know where I place it that you need to ask where's the Bible. That the way God's will is, if you are plugged in the flow of what God is doing, it should never be a question. Because if you are plugged in the flow of what God is doing, you are doing his will. And then you will not worry about his will for you because his will for you is found in his will. First Timothy 2, 3. Uh, I'll read from here. He says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So this is something that is important to him. Who desires all men to be saved 
and to come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified. I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Now, what is good and accepted because I that all men be saved. That's what John chapter 6. John chapter 6. We want to decode God's will. I will find this all over the place because of that. It's so consistent in scripture that it will be difficult for you not to be able to see it. Somebody says, God, God of God is so plain, people may need to hire others to deceive them. <laughs> so I read from verse uh, 38. Chapter 6, verse 38. He says, For I have come down from heaven. Not to do my own will, but the will of who? Of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me. What is here? It's not, it's the Bible. What's the will? What is the will? That of all he has given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up at the last day. Verse 40. And this is the will of him who sent me. Yeah? That everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now what is the will of God? The will of God is to ensure that all men are saved. Are we together? Are we together? Get this very clearly. If you look at the life of Jesus Christ and we we'll break it down as well to say, how can we trace the will of God? If you look at the Old Testament, you see every point out to Jesus. If you look at Jesus, ask yourself, where does the activity of Jesus end? The activity of Jesus, the purpose that Jesus Christ came to do was to come and die. I was together. Now, what was the purpose of that day? The purpose of that day was to execute God's will. And what is God's will? That all, everyone, who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life and be raised on the last day. Now, understand this. That God's will, what God is achieving in the earth, what God is in the process of doing that has not changed from time, from the beginning of time, is to find a place for humanity in His plan, reconcile it to them, to Him, and get them saved. That Jesus Christ said, I am not come to do my own will. In a very classical piece, in the, in, in the Garden of Testimony, Jesus Christ was tempted to pray for something else. Yeah. Are we together? He said, ah, ah, if only this cup will pass over me. But then you realize this is God, no. Not my will, but your will be done. Now what was that God's will? God's will is simple, is to save humanity. I'll read it again. He says, this is the will of the Father who sent me. Verse 39. That all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Again, verse 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have the last life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Now, we read in Timothy that this is what is good and acceptable in the eyes of God, that all men be saved. We read in John that this is God's will, and all men be saved. So, what's God's will? In simple terms. In simple summary, what is God doing in some here? God is engaging the process to ensure that humanity can, can be saved. Is that correct? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Now my question is, are you doing it? Are you involved in that work? Now I'd like to say something so I understand this. There is nothing more important to God. I'm a business person, I love business. And I'll give you this example. Let's imagine that I am doing business. And the business I'm doing, let's imagine I'm selling Bibles. I go together. And I borrow money from the bank. I borrow a hundred million from the bank. And I buy old King James Bible. 
King James Version. Thou shalt not ye I was gonna thou thy authority. Are you sort of million naira to stop it? Are you with me? And I have in my warehouse, I don't have money again. The bank is charging me interest. What will I do? What? To sell. To sell. To sell. If you come and meet me, I make for so that I can go and buy what people are eating. If you come and meet me and say, ah, please, I would like, there's an idea I have. This idea is for Bible software. I can send it for free. Will I tell you? <laughs> will you be bothered to me? If you go and meet me and say, What is your will for my life? Ha! <laughs> yeah, my will for your life. <laughs> my will is, forget your life. This is my will. <laughs> Plug your life into it. If you go and meet me and you say to me, I know, if I didn't know what, give me a thousand of my books. Let me go into the world. And sell it. And you tell me, I will ask you, what do you need? I will tell you, what do you need? You say, you give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this, because that I don't. I will spend my resources in that direction. Why? Because it's in line with my will. God's will is not complicated. God's will, from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation, is captured in the salvation of mankind. That's God's will. How do I get myself involved in God's will? Everything that I do that lines up with that objective positions me with God's will. Now, even Jesus Christ was challenged to say, Ah, this cup is a horrible cup I'm about to carry. I, I feel like I feel like not doing this. Somebody analyzed. I said, if Jesus Christ had chosen to stay alive from death till now, preaching the word, I would tell and easy to die, we will not be saved. If you are there, and he was a good teacher, Bible says he spoke and he caught their attention. Jesus Christ was a solid as a they, they marveled. How can somebody be so bright? You know why Jesus was using palm was using palm examples? He was many of the examples of palm examples. I was together. I'll tell you why. Because see them at this time shall not cease. And because see them at this time shall not cease, farmers shall not cease. I was together. Farmers are timeless. Scripture has made it so. There's no dispensation, there's no age. Lawyers will pass away. Doctors will pass away. Engineers will pass away. I'm telling you. But farmers, seed time and harvest will not cease. As long as the earth remains. So the only example that just can use to connect to society is the timeless examples that we society with of a trade that will not cease. Now just try to stop them, say they sow away to sow. You will tell them, you know, you are not battery. You will teach them, you know, with farmland. You tell them about the spider, you tell them about the grain that was dying. Are we together? All for them to understand this is God's will. Now, he was a great teacher, he will not fulfill God's will by continuing to teach. Because the spiritual life form that will be better in all humanity cannot happen until he dies. Because I said the grain of seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Mm. Now, the purpose and the will of God is for, it's not for the seed to abide alone, but for it to be multiplied in the hearts and lives of every one of us. That there are two stories of creation. The first creation was the first man, Adam. Second creation was the last Adam and the second man, Jesus. Now, that in the same way sin came to the world through Adam, meaning because our great grandfather died, we all died. Does that make sense? Hello? Yes, sir. If your great grandfather died at 22, will you be alive? No. Your great grandfather died before you met your great grandmother. Yes, will you be alive? No. no. You will have died with him. <laughs> I you that. Yeah. Because God sees the end of the beginning, in God's mind, you will exist. Yes. But you will be dead. Because the person who will have given you life died. Now that Adam. The moment Adam died, all of us died. It's not because we are good or bad, we died. It, it doesn't consider our potentials, we died. It doesn't, ah, but in the future, I can see that Tule is a great man, dead. 
because Adam died. Now, God had to introduce another creation that we can plug into by faith. That our connection by our, our connection into that new family, the Bible says, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you. That revelation, your ability to see to the things that God is doing without seeing it, is what the church will be built on. That God's will is to reconcile lost humanity to himself. That's his will. Now, my question to you is, are you doing that? Can you look at one second and ask person? Are you doing God's will? Now, it sounds like a theoretical question. Let's make it practical. Are we together? God wants to save humanity. God has created a model in which you have. And that model, Jesus Christ came to demonstrate for three and a half years. He gathered himself a couple of disciples. Told him number. I think we are too many already following God's pattern. We are achieving a lot more than Jesus. I'm not very happy about it. But it says greater works are in you. So I will assume that we are doing greater works. But follow me on this journey. Jesus Christ spent three and a half years showing you a template of how not to worry, but how to operate with the principles akin to compound interest, build a few people, and get the system in place that can save nations. I want to be by discipleship. God's will is not unclear. It is clear. He said it here two times. This is the will of the Father. And now, connect it back. He says, many of them will say to me, Lord, Lord, we were doing exceptional things. He says, but you are not doing the will of my Father in heaven. Now let me show you this. It is possible to serve a program. I was together. Get the crippled there, the blind, the lame, the deaf. Get them there. Get them healed. Get the exciting and go to hell. Because what God is looking at in the context of what I'm doing is uh, people being reconciled to God in a system that they are truly being reconciled to God. I'll show you. You know, we, we identified and we said Jesus Christ to all his disciples, Matthew 4 19. He said, Follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. And we established that if you follow him in reality, you will become a fisher of men. I was together. Now, I now said, If you are not a fisher of men, I can't hear you. Good. Now, if you are not fishing for men, you are not following. If you are following and you are not fishing for men, what's going on? You are not following. You think you are following. I want to get Now understand this. If I am following and I am fishing for men, what is the proof that I am really following? It's not that I am fishing for men. The proof I am following is that the men that are fishing for are also fishing for men. Bible says, it says, go into the world and make disciples of all nations. What is the proof of a disciple? Is that I am discipling others. I want to get Now, that I can organize my jamboree. Follow me. The scripture. I can organize a good event. Because God's gifts are and, and, and calling are without repentance, God will move. I want to get God will move. In fact, these days, if I don't even want God to move, I can call doctors. Do you understand? I can arrange for doctors to come. And they will move. Because others can also kick us off. Like nine, about 75% of people who are blind can be solved medically. I want to get a good percentage. You can remove the cataract, you can remove the blocking, you can, you can be solved percentage. The reason why they are blind is because they are poor. For the most part, I've done that by experience. I've invested in that direction with it, I know. Now, I can call doctors in place, I can get everything in place, and they will be happy because God doesn't waste souls by how much you have. A poor soul and a rich soul are souls. A child soul and another souls, they are souls. Yeah. I went together. And they will count one, one. They won't count as two. In heaven and in hell. They will count as a little soul. Now I can organize an event and do whatever it is I want to do if I am not creating out of those people, people who are following God with the capacity to inspire others to do the same. I am not doing God's will. I am practicing lawlessness. Let's look at let's look at this question. Matthew, 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 Matthew 7 again. I like to read from this translation. Let me show you something very interesting. I like to read in contemporary English. 
Matthew 27, verse 21. He said, knowing the correct password. Saying, chapter 7, verse 21. Matthew 27, 21. I want to read the message. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Knowing the correct password. Saying, master, master. For instance, is it going to get you anywhere with me? What is required is serious obedience. Doing what my father wills. Full stop. I see it now at the final judgment. Thousands strutting up to me and saying, Master, we preach the message. We bash the demons. Our God-sponsored projects have everyone talking. And you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. All you did was use me to make yourselves important. You don't impress me one bit. You are out of here. That I can do I can do the event, I can make it big, I can be preaching it in God's name, I can be doing it in God's name. Listen, the fruit of that event must be there's somebody who is following God who has the capacity to inspire followers. I'll tell you what the problem is. I'll show you where lawlessness leads to manifest itself. The problem is, I can also create this in such a way that all that everybody else can do here is simply wash the floor, clean the place, decorate the place, have no internal personal value to command discipleship or get other people to follow God. You would think you are serving God, you would think that people are following you, you would think that you are doing God's will, you are not. That anything I do from this pulpit, from this podium, that allows me to take responsibility for all the work and you have nothing to do it, is not God's will. That the proof of my followership, if I say, follow me, I will tell you, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Simple. I'm following Christ. He says, you make me a child of men. I must have people and telling them, I make a child of men. There was a, there was a particular passage in the Bible where Paul was saying, what some of you are saying, I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. He says, did Paul die for you? He said, did I baptize you? I won't say, he, said that. he said, I only baptize four of you. He said, look at this other church person, this family. I didn't baptize anybody else. So that he would say, I baptize you to myself. Meaning what? Already as far back as in the as in art, there are still a step where, why would I have to baptize everybody? The Bible says, make certain conditions, baptize everyone and the Son of the Holy Spirit. That is, if I baptize a few people, they should have the capacity to baptize others. Are we together? The question I want to ask you is, are you doing God's will? Think about it practically. I don't want us to be talking about it, I want us to do God's will. And God's will is that men be saved. Now, the last day, he loses none of them. This is what he said. He said, he says, it's not very clear. Let me, let me, let me read from the other verses. He says, I may lose none of them. How will you not lose them? You will lose them when they are all sitting down and all they do is listen. But when they are actively involved, he says, This is the will of the Father who said, That all he has given me, I should lose nothing. But, but she raised it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me. That everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have a lasting life, and I will raise him for the last day. I tell you the reason why it is easy, forgive me, for a pastor to sleep with a congregation member is because the congregation member is irresponsible as well. Follow me. If I have people that are following me, and the congregation member has people that are following the congregation member, together, then it won't be about what you want to do to me. It will be about the fact that there are people who I'm responsible for. Joseph said, how shall I do this great, how shall I do this thing and sin against God and offend my master? That there's a level of responsibility that you have that makes you responsible. Are we together? That all of us must be plugged in a system in God where I have who I'm following, I have who is following me, I am responsible. Are you because we? I asked at a particular time, I said in the last one year, 
Can you mention the names of people who you have been a part of their story in their journey to God and you are ensuring that they are following you and they are being following you? And I said, if you cannot say anything that happened in the last one year, then for the last one year, you have not been following Jesus. Or, more specifically put, in the last one year, if God will evaluate your life in isolation, He will say, you have not been doing my work. My prayer is that we will locate ourselves in the center of God's will in Jesus' name. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. Now let's go quickly, let's do a, a, a small Bible story. And let's understand and see God's will in different dimensions. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians. I found myself reading Ephesians again this last week. And it was as if I have never, I never read Ephesians before. But going to read all the Bible reading, they told me not to say that I'm stopping soon. So that it won't, it won't look like uh, I'm not still done. But let's follow me on this journey. I'd like us to read this very quickly, I will. And then I'll pass a few things there. Ephesians chapter 1. I will read contemporary English, the message transition. If you are there, say I am there. I can't hear you. Okay. I'll take you from I'll take you from verse 3 here. It says, How blessed is God and what a blessing he is. He's the Father of our Master Jesus Christ. And takes us behind this of his blessing in him. Long before he had laid out the explanation, he had us in mind. And he has settled on us as the focus of his love, to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. Long, long ago, he decided. From Genesis. What pleasure he took in planning this. If you read the this is according to the pleasure of his will. He already planned us to be adopted as sons. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Because of the sacrifice of the desire, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we are a free people, free of penalties and punishments chopped up by all our misdeeds. And not just barely free either, abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need. Letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ. A long range plan in which every everything will be brought together and summed up in him, everything in the deepest heaven, everything on planet earth. That God's intention, his plan, his will is to bring everything together in Christ. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Now follow me on this journey. That you and I have no capacity to discover our purpose in reality, outside of Christ. So when you say, ah, I have a career life, I have a spiritual life, I have a this life, you have one life. That life comes into fullness at the junction of Christ. Listen. That life comes into fullness, you identify, you begin to really live. It says in Christ, that we find who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose is working out in everything and everyone. It's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, this message of your salvation found yourselves home free. Signs, sins are delivered by the Holy Spirit. This sin of God is the first installment of what's coming. A reminder that we will get everything God has planned for us in prison and glorious life. That's why when I heard of the Holy trust you have in the Master, Jesus, and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you. Every time I pray, I think of you and I give thanks. But I do more than thank. I ask that the God of our Master Jesus, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and designing in knowing him personally, your eyes focused and clear, so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, 
the utter extravagance of his work in us, who trust him as rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body, in which he speaks and acts, by which he feels everything in his presence. Now understand this, it's very simple. God's will is like the flow of a life in a vine. He finds expression in a branch that is truly his branch. He gives us a very clear picture here of how God runs things. If you want to see as a human body, if you want to see me, for example, as Christ, if you want to use this picture, Christ is the head. How is we that? The body of Christ is the mass of the world. He says the world is not, he says the church is not peripheral to the world. He says the real thing is the church. The world is on the outside of the church. He said through that church, through you and I, Jesus Christ rules everything. Galaxies, governments, nothing is except from his rule. Now listen, I will find my highest value when I understand that I am the means of God's expression in the midst of the earth. His will is to reach out to those who are lost, reconcile them to himself, and the only channel through which he does it is his body. Have you ever seen a head without the body before? Have you seen it before? Maybe in a movie. Yeah? Where they take off the head of the body. How does it look? Huh? It looks dead. It looks helpless. Will it help if we crown the head? That head that doesn't have the body. God decides to judge us today. Are you following God? Are you being the will of the Father? You know, I, I, I look back in my life and I'm asking myself if God took me away 15 years ago, for example, would would I have been evaluated better than you evaluate me now? Because there's, listen, you need to understand that there's urgency. You need to understand that when John the Baptist came, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus Christ spoke, he spoke like it was happening now. When Peter spoke, Peter said we're in the last hour. Paul is talking to the officials, he said we're in desperate times. He says we're in the last days. I went together. And were they in the last days, literally? No. But there's a sense of urgency in the heart of God that if you are not connected with, you don't understand. Jesus Christ fed them with bread. Listen. Jesus Christ fed them with bread today. And by the next day, he was connecting with God's will. Now listen. Feeding them with bread was a move of compassion that was not connected with saving their souls. I went together. By the next day, just like I spoke, they said, they are back, as I expected. They okay. are looking for bread again. Yeah. Say, I am the bread of life. I am the bread that you will eat, and you will never be not He said, let me make it very clear to you. You have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Bible says, if I see that, I say, ah. Bible says, when you finish that message, Many of the disciples left and refused to follow him again. So Jesus had more disciples than 12. Then it remained 12. Where the Bible? It remained 12. He now has the question How about you? Will you also leave? He said, Ah, where will we go? We have a world that I like. What am I saying to you? I'm saying, Jesus Christ, even though he had not died, and he cannot really bring salvation. He began to connect it for them by the next day. Many of us are very comfortable to, ah, let's just be doing this one to attract them. If you give them bread today, we'll give them bread tomorrow, give them bread, you are no less. Or, ah, Samaritan that woman, just give her water. The next day, Samaritan that woman went out, invited the book, same day. If I had people to come back, come and meet the man who has told me what I never know. The use of spiritual gifts is not to show. The use of every gift that God gives every human being is to connect men with him. That's how you function in his will. He says, I am divine, you are my branches. 
if your priority is not my priority, you are not my branch. He said, you are not my branch, you are like a branch cut from the stem, you will be packed and put to fire because of your use. Listen, hellfire is a natural destination of people who are not connected with his way. It's natural. You don't understand? If I have a tree and the branch is there, what will the branch be doing? What will the branch be doing? It will be carrying fruits. I go together. If I have a great tree and there's a branch there, the role of that branch is to bear fruit. Say with me, the role of the branch, the branch is to bear fruit. The role of the branch the of is to carry fruit. Now, if it is not carrying fruit, it's one of two things. Either it's not connected to the branch to the vine, or it's not productive. Or what use it is, is it? They are, they are use. The use is break off the branch, put it aside, what will happen to the branch? It will dry up. What will it be used for? Fire. It's good for fire. So hellfire is not a big deal. Hellfire is a natural destination of people who are not connected with fire. <laughs> so it's not that I know. It's, it, it makes sense. You are not connected, you are drying up. You are drying up, you are good for fire. Maybe the fire that will be used to do some other things. Let's go to Ephesians 6. I'll, I'll, I'll stop with that one. Ephesians 6. 5 to 8. We're talking about servants and masters. So servants respectfully obey your earthly masters, but always and I have obeyed the real master. You know, when you read this kind of verses, you will begin to wonder that we have servants in our times. Many of us are servants. In the context of what the Bible is describing here. I'll tell you, I'll show you what it is. Because if, if you are if you don't have absolute control of your time and you're not free. I, 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 you know, it, it's not in the same way it exists their time, but in today's age, you know, we have what we call civil servant. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are not a civil servant, you are a corporate servant. <laughs> it says, it says if, you have, if you have a job that you are doing, don't go and put on your job. That's what I say. Respectfully obey your MP and CEO, but always with an eye on obeying the real master, Christ. Don't just do what you have to do to get by, but work heartily as Christ's servant, doing what God wants you to do. It means you can do it part-time. And walk with a smile on your face, always keeping in mind that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, we'll be giving the orders. You are really serving God. Good work will get you good pay from the master, regardless of whether you are a slave or free. Okay? Um, and, and then, a few things you want to evaluate. Ask yourself, why did Jesus Christ come? Jesus Christ said he came to seek and save the lost. That's what's important to him. He says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I may have come that may have life and do what? Ladies and gentlemen, it is natural for anything that was born to want to give birth to others. Pregnancy and childbearing is not forced on anybody. It's a design. I go together. If you know that you give birth to children in your lifetime, can I hear? Yeah. 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 Uh, this is, God is here. You will give out a children in your life like, hey, yeah. yes. Is anybody for seeing? It's natural. Go together. That life wants to increase. Everything wants to grow. The same way somebody labored for you to be in Christ today. And you owe it to God to plug in his way and bear fruit. He sent the Holy Spirit to help us continue the work of the Jesus Christ died and became the supreme ruler of heaven and earth. Supreme. And we are privileged to be his employee. We are privileged to be his, his hand and his feet. And you should not be, ah, I might know. It should be 
natural, your ultimate desire and reality should be to do his will. Can you carry this beside you and ask the person again, are you doing God's will? Are you doing God's will? Tell the person, do God's will. Do God's will. Tell the person, be involved, be involved in what God is doing. So, John 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I remain in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to desire more than anything to bear fruit. I was telling somebody, I remember the time in my life, I was, I was 17. I was 17 at that time. Every night, I would go around, walking around, looking for an opportunity to get somebody to hear about the gospel and to get saved. I used to ask Jesus of him, I'll go to meet them in night prayer. I'll ask the, <laughs> I'll ask the prayer coordinator, please give me five minutes. God has sent me. <laughs> God has sent me. And I'll talk to them very quickly. And I'll say, I know you want to give your life to Christ. May everybody raise their hands up and I'll take the shell of paper, collect their names. There was no food there. So the only way I could see them again is go and announce their name in their hostels or somewhere else. God wants to reach the world. There are many things we have prioritized and made more important than His will. And let me tell you this: your financial prosperity, your success, your as in everything you are looking for in life is available when you are connected with God's plan. This year is young. This year is making out to be my best year. Already. And the only thing I can attribute it to is the fact that I am more in line with operating in his will than I have in a long time. Abide with him. Be a branch. It's not about you. Look at this side, you say it's not about you. Many of our prayer points are about us. Many of our desires are about us. And I've shared with you a solo one. It's not about you. The, the more you are connected to it, the more you distance yourself away from what is possible. It's not about you. The moment you can realize about God, you will be taken care of. You, as the Bible says, ah, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness. And all this will be added. I assure you, God's word, prove it, doesn't lie. Everything else will be added. Eyes are not sick. Let his priority be your priority. Focus on being productive. Let's and gentlemen set a goal for yourself. How many people will you lead to God this year? Let it be four. It's a fine number. For me, should be at night. Don't go out and do the evangelism that we should do in the past. We don't, know, we don't know where they are now. I went somewhere one time. Ah, about 500 people came up to give their lives to Christ. I was very happy. I don't know where they are. Some of them will probably be somewhere where the person who is doing the real work is the person that ensures that they are not just following, but they are being followed. Let's give ourselves, let's be clear in your mind. God's will is to save us. God's will is to ensure we also create a system that allows us to be able to lead others. And there is no difference in the value of the soul. So if you can reach and more people, reach them. I want to get I don't mind if all the people that we are working with are people who have problems. I want to get It's a fine place to start. Let them have problems. God will solve their problems as He plugs them into His will. That if you are plugged, that will not be there. Do you understand? The same way if I send you on an errand, I will fall with you. If you are not going on my errand, you take care of yourself. But I'm the one that said go. I am committed to you going well. I'm not likely to send you on a bus ride if what I think is a plane flight. He wills to live in you. Men say, ah, God lives in us. I doubt it. I doubt that many people who profess that God lives in them, that God truly lives in them. Because if God truly lives in you, then God's priority will be your priority. Just by the Father, he is. 
God will also be sustained. Amen. I like to take the thoughts that you have with you, the thoughts of you that I take four. I like you to fill it with details. Fill it well. Uh, you want to know what your decisions are, what you want to do, what you want to be a part of. Uh, do you want to serve? Do you want to commit your life first to God? Do you want to, do you want to commit your life? Rededicate your life to Him. We ask you to feel it so that we can communicate with you. Feel it with that great resource. If you've been here before and there's no decision to see your name, we'll take you from there. People of God, the most important thing on God's agenda, what qualifies us to be part of His family, what qualifies us to be in parts, to have eternal life, what qualifies us to be in the kingdom of heaven, and we're doing God's will. My prayer for you is that you will not be a hero of what you do, man, but you will be a doer in Jesus' name. Fill it with angry details, fill it quickly, uh, so that when we pass the offering basket around, you will be able to drop it there. Uh, we also got our accounts registered in the course of uh, last month. These are the account details. For who have been asking for the account details, you have it there. Uh, we have a Skype account, a very GZB account. Sky. 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 I'm the Skype person. Maybe Skype, but I'm fine, finally I'm fine. Man. Somebody told me that last week, last week Thursday, we did an exercise. And that exercise, I was just telling somebody, I was telling him, you know, I said, I asked the question, I said, if I give you 10,000 naira as God's money, what will you do with it? And I realized that people are busy. Because people are willing to do things for God's money. They are not willing to do with what they have in their hands. Even though what they have in their hands is God's money. I just said you were going to do forex. So that's even I'm going to teach You can get the job, you do this, you do this. I was saying it as what you could do. But you said you took it as a prophecy. And in three days or four days, it's not a new job. You probably share this only at the end of the month at some point. You know, so if you if you let's let's you know, so I was, I was, I was joking, I was saying Skype, maybe Skype will achieve acquire the bank. Maybe it's the prophecy. But well, Skype and can move the P. That was a capital there. If we commit ourselves to what God is doing, God will beautify and decorate our lives. And what gives us relevance in eternity is that we connect to what God is doing. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, we magnify and exalt you. We thank you for your word that we have heard. Oh, we ask that this word will not stand in judgment against us in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I commit everybody under the sound of my voice to your hand. The people physically present and the people watching from online, I ask that you meet us at the exact places where we are in Jesus' name. Change our stories. Let us be useful to your cause. Let us be fruit bearing branches in the name of Jesus. Let us not be carried away with our work as servants. Let us know who the true master is. Let us figure out what pleases our master. And let's do it. Oh Lord, use us in your discipleship making process, in your reaching out to the world and converting men to you. Let us be useful. Oh Lord, as I proclaim and I share your word, I saw visions of people going into schools. I saw visions of people taking up children. I saw visions of people getting involved with the poor. Oh Lord, God Almighty, I ask that you be this great grace upon this house. To execute your will in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Our Lord God Almighty, we take it for granted that all the resources required to execute your counsel and your plan is available in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy God. For our providence given in Jesus' name.
dot platform for expression on the app. And today we know we have special people in our midst. Come on, if you are special, let me hear you say yes. Yes. If you are special, let me hear you say yes. Yes. For this particular set of special people are coming to fellowship with us for the first time. If you know you are in that category, we would love to celebrate you and to give you a warmly welcome. Please raise up your hand so that we can see you. If today is your first time, come on, church, please celebrate them. Take one more step of faith and stand up inside your chair so that we can give you something that we have for you. Put your hands together for them and we love you. We pray for you to come and you come. God will bless you as you come. Please show them some love.
come. Please, we have been told to tell us if we do not review, we cannot monitor what is going on. Ensure that we are available for the first 30 minutes of the financial mastery class so that we can review the week's past and the week's gone ahead. We have learned that God did everything and then He saw what He did and it was very good. Let us spend the first 30 minutes to see what we did last week and find out if it was good or it was very good. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Ladies and gentlemen, let's please rise up and go to service this morning. Look at your neighbor eyeball to eyeball and say, This week, this week, I will do God's will. This week, this week, I will seek God's will. I will seek God's will. This week, this week, I will know God's will. I will know God's will. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together and share the name. Or the land.